Let's go ahead and jump over to the implementation. I'm going to open up detect April tag.py and we'll start off with our imports. Here's our April tag library, which we installed or presumably installed on your system a few moments ago. You have arc parse for command line parsing and then CB2 are your OpenCV bindings. Now we move on to parsing command line arguments. Here we have the path to our input image, which will be one of these two example images over here. Once we have the arguments parsed, we'll load the input image from disk and then convert it from grayscale. This is the only uh, pre-processing step required to actually uh, detect April tags in an input image. So from here, we, we need to specify our options for the April tag detector and more specifically the family of tags that we want to detect. The, the April tag library is not going to automatically infer what family you're working with. So you want to make sure you, you specify that. And again, you can use this uh, example image here to, uh, to actually uh, set the correct family. And if you're not sure what family is, uh, what the family is, then you just, you do a guess and check, you do a trial and error. So you'll start with this one that doesn't work. Okay. So maybe I'll try, you know, tag standard 41 H 12. And I'll run the script again to detect my detect, to detect my tags. No. Okay. Move on to the next one. Ad nauseum until you find uh, the one that's working. Uh, working for you but again this is the this is the standard family that you'll tend to see for april tags but just be aware that other other tag families exist as well so once our options are defined we'll instantiate our uh, april tag detector with our options and finally we'll call the detect method passing in our grayscale image which provides us with the results and then just for debugging purposes we'll display the total number of april tags detected Next up on line 29, we're going to start looping over our April tag detection results. And each of these results right here, you know, they have this corner object, which specifies each of the corners of the bounding box rectangle of April tag. So these are actually, uh, these, each of these individual points are actually um, our NumPy, or, or NumPy integers, but we can't use these NumPy uh, values directly within our um, OpenCV drawing function. So what we do is we explicitly cast them to Python integers. So once we have the four corners, we'll use the cv2.line function to actually draw the bounding, uh, the bounding box of the April tag of the individual April tag on the image. We'll then use the center attribute of the results. And that'll give us the center X, Y coordinates of, of the April tag. We'll use the cv2.circle function to draw the center X, uh, X Y coordinates. And then just for a little bit of annotation purposes, we'll grab the, the tag family and also draw that on, on the output image. And then the final step is to show the output image. So let's see the script in action. I'm going to copy and paste the usage. As you can see, the script is running, running very quickly. It's super fast. Here I've detected the tag in the input image, and then I've drawn, drawn the center. Let's try the second example image. Again, super, super fast. Here we've detected as many as April tags as we possibly can. You'll see that some of them have not been detected though. There's this one here. There's this one in the background, that one in the background, and this one way back, way back there. And you know, study this image for a second. Why, why do you think that is that we couldn't detect these, these other April tags? Well, if you look closely, you'll see that each of them is partially occluded in some manner. So it looks like this antenna here is presumably, I presume that's an antenna, that antenna is blocking uh, the right corner, the right side of this April tag. So it doesn't have that full block border that it needs. And the same goes for this one over here. There's something, uh, presumably a camera that's blocking part of the April tag. This one over here is partially occluded and this one over there is nearly fully occluded. So what, is, what does that mean in practice? In practice, if your April tags are occluded, you're not going to be able to detect them. You need to be able to have full view of these tags. Um, deep learning based object detectors have made tremendous advances in, in terms of occluded object detection, but even, even your most state of the art deep learning object detectors still struggle with this, uh, with occluded objects. So when you're working with an algorithm that's supposed to be incredibly fast, it's supposed to be robust, it's supposed to be um, running in real time, even on a CPU, even and especially on resource-constrained devices, 
you're not going to be able to have that uh, invariance to occlusion. You're going to have to be able to be willing to tolerate the fact that if your April tag is not fully visible and if it's partially occluded, well, then you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to detect the April tag. So definitely definitely keep that in mind while you're working working with April tags. Um, as far as generating April tags goes, there it's unfortunately a, a bit of a pain. Uh, there are or, online generators for Arcu tags. That's why I really like working with Arcu tags. I think April tags are are certainly interesting and certainly useful, but the Arcu tags in general are a little a little more forgiving and easier to work with. Um, if you check out the blog post associated with this video guide, you'll see that towards the bottom of the bottom of the tutorial, I provide uh, like a uh, limitations and, and frustration section. And inside that section, I link to pre-generated tags that you can use. That way you could just you know, print them out and, and use them or use them in your own in your own applications. So again, this is really just meant to be a real quick and dirty um, introduction to April tags. I have a complete series of tutorials dedicated on how to on how to expand on this. We'll be doing stuff like augmented reality. Uh, we'll probably do some camera calibration with it. We'll do some pretty neat things with uh, detecting ARCU tags, generating ARCU tags, like guessing the type of ARCU tags with OpenCV. And we'll eventually build up to this application of what I was telling you about, which is this concept of automatic color correction, which is really one of the most neat, interesting concepts in, in computer vision. I know with deep learning, it's so easy to get overshadowed by um, what deep learning models are doing and the accuracy they're getting and the, the novel results they're getting. But because of that, I, I think new practitioners to computer vision don't fully appreciate and understand just how far basic computer vision and, and image processing algorithms can get you when you constrain them properly. You know, when you're working in unconstrained environments, unconstrained lighting conditions, there's variations of viewpoint angles and size and scale. Yeah, that's when the limitations of just traditional computer vision start to show. But if you just control just a handful of those, of those, uh, those areas, traditional computer vision goes really, really far. So if you're watching this video, if you're new to computer vision and OpenCV, and I, I know probably all your classes, all your colleagues are talking about deep learning, don't, don't sell yourself short. Understand that deep learning is just one tool of many in your toolbox. When you see a construction worker building building a home, you know they're not taking a saw and trying to install a toilet. They're not taking you know a blowtorch and trying to use that to hammer in nails uh, to build uh, build the joists to your home. No, they're using the correct tool, and it's through experience that they've learned not only how to use the tool, but how to approach a problem. And be like, yep that is the right tool i need to solve this and computer vision and deep learning is the same way deep learning is just one tool one tool of many that you can utilize so throughout the next next few months uh, we'll be discussing more of these traditional computer vision image processing pipelines i'll be showing you how far they can actually get you and then of course you know i'll be throwing some deep learning content in there as well because again it's it's just cool to see what deep learning is doing so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you enjoyed going through the video guide, but you know what? Now it's your turn. It's your turn to take this code, to apply it to the example images, replicate the results that I'm getting, and then turn around and apply it to your own images as well. Because if you do not, you're not fully understanding the, the all the information that I'm giving you today. Don't be a passive learner. Don't sit here and just watch the video and be done with it. Take the code, take the Jupyter notebooks, run it yourself. It'll give you more experience. The, we learn best by incorporating as many senses as possible. So right now you're watching me, you're, you're hearing me, but now it's time for touch. It's now it's time for you to take this, run it, learn it for yourself, continue to expand your mind, build more tools in your toolbox, because that is the name of the game. That is why Pyme Research exists, to build your toolbox and to make you more successful at applying computer vision, deep learning, and open CV. I will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.